Is this it? I think we're about to begin. Thank you. I'm Neil Flickstein, Chair of the Sociology Department, and I'd like to uh, thank all of you for coming today. This is the first Goffman Lecture, and for those of you who don't know, Irving Goffman was one of the great sociologists of the post-war era. He was a member of the Department of Sociology at the University of California for many years. It is fitting that the first recipient of the Goffman Award is perhaps the greatest living sociologist in the world. I am more than pleased to have Professor Pierre Bourdieu here today, and I consider it an honor to be able to introduce him as the first Goffman Award winner. Professor Bourdieu currently holds the chair in sociology at the College de France. He is also director of the Center for European Sociology. Professor Bourdieu is the author of some 30 books and nearly 400 articles that have been translated into two dozen languages. He has made important contributions to many disciplines, including sociology, anthropology, history, literature, political science, linguistics, and philosophy. His best known books include Outline of a Theory of Practice, Distinction, Homo Academicus, and The Logic of Practice. Pierre Bourdieu is also one of Europe's most influential public intellectuals. His writings on education, media, racism, and immigration, and more recently on issues of inequality and social justice, have shaped debates in France and neighboring countries. But you do not come here today to hear me speak of Pierre Bourdieu's past work and reputation. You came here today to hear Professor Bourdieu. I am pleased to welcome Professor Bourdieu, and I look forward to the first Goffman lecture entitled, Masculine Domination Revisited. I want to thank the sociology department and uh, Professor Neil Dickstein for the opportunity to speak here today in front of this impressive audience. I would like, I would, I would like to thank also the students and the faculty for their welcome and all the different departments and programs for their welcoming birthday. First, I would like to say that I am honored, indeed proud, of being the first recipient of the Goffman Prize awarded for, by the Sociology Department of Berkeley. Irving Goffman was a very dear, dear friend of mine. And leaving, but leaving aside personal memories of the man, I would like to insist on two char characteristics of a scholar, which, in my view, deserve to be celebrated and uh, imitated. First, he was a very modest. He was very. He was a very modest person, and especially when it came to his theoretical culture, he often expressed his regrets at not having the strong philosophical training that some European scholar uh, 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 have, but in fact, as you will really realize by scrutinizing his footnotes, and especially the substance of his analysis, Goffman has a, had a penetrating and deft mastery of the theor theoretical tools he needed to formulate and to carry out his scientific project. And without playing the part of a philosopher, he made signal contributions to philosophy, in particular to the philosophy of language, of performative arts, and of the self, among many others, other things. Irving Goffman had another very rare intellectual quality, which is closely related to his modesty. He had a unique ability to detect and dis de dec decipher uh, the minute details the quasi-invisible processes, the infinitesimal fe features 
of everyday life. He was the discoverer of the infinitely small in society, and he raised to the dignity of scientific objects the bits and pieces of social life that were before everyone's eyes but had never been seen and understood in his light. By so doing, he opened up a whole new realm of inquiry for sociologists, anthropologists, linguists, educationalists, and others. One thing is particular, particularly worthy of notice in Goffman's way of working. Instead of offering verbal answers to huge and vague questions such as what is gender or how, how do gender, race, and class interact, the kind of questions so fashionable today which, uh, which lend themselves to neither serious philosophy nor rigorous social sciences, but to something that falls in between and often meets the standards of neither, Goffman worked to reformulate broad, abstract issues by means of a precise analysis of the most concrete and apparently trivial details of social phenomena he, he observed. I once had in my hands the box in which he kept the slides of advertisements, well over 1,000 of them, which he had collected and examined to ground his analysis of the ritual ritualization of gender relations. This is a good example, a model, particularly for young, younger scholars, of how one does innovative and rigorous social analysis without huge amounts of economic and bureaucratic capital and even symbolic capital, that is, without the ritual name dropping of canonical philosophical authors and perfunctory references that eat up ever more energy and space. <laughs> A few years ago, I wrote an article entitled Masculine Domination. Today, in his brief lecture, I would like to do three things. First, oh. <laughs> first, I want to explicate the methodological intentions which inspired me to tackle this issue in the manner I did, that is by resorting to what in, on first look appears like a geographic analysis of one particular case of masculine domination, but is, in my view, a quasi-experimentation about the fundamental structures of gender. Second, I will restate and elaborate some of the main substantive results of this work in progress, which I hope to develop further, thanks to the critical dialogue with American scholars and which, of which this lecture is one moment. Third and lastly, I want to suggest some analytical and political implications of such an analysis of masculine domination premised on the mat premised, premised, premised on a materialist uh, theory of the, eco the economy of symbolic goods. For reasons of time, I will address these points in a schematic and somewhat didactic manner without entry, entering into the details of the analysis and without attempting to cover all aspects of the problem. This is a kind of problem, like most real theoretical problems, that is best analyzed in a seminar workshop with very concrete empirical material, not in formal lecture like today. I want to make sure that I get the main point across and I want mostly to start off the discussion. When we attempt to think masculine domination, we stand in danger of resorting to or submitting to modes of thinking or modes of thinking that are themselves products of millennia of masculine domination. Whether we like it or not, the analyst, man of women, is part and parcel of the object she tries to grasp. He or she has internalized in the form of unconscious schemata of perception and appreciation the historical social structures of masculine rule. Consequently, our first imperative must be to find a practical strategy that enables us to effect the methodological, methodical objectivation of the sub subject of scientific objectivation, a device 
for uncovering the structure of the archaic unconscious we owe to our ontogenesis and phylogenesis as gendered beings and which leads us to partake of the phenomenon we seek to plan. This is one variant of the modern form of the critical intention exemplified by Kant, namely to explore the categories of understanding. In a more materialist vein initiated by Durkheim, it involves describing the historical genesis and social fabrication of our body, of the symbolic forms through which we construct the world, but which being issued out of this world are all more often than not in agreement with the world, so that we tend to take this world for granted and collude to its perpetuation. 30 years ago, it was necessary to show, as I did in my book, Reproduction in, Educa in Education, Society and Culture, it was necessary to show that the school is a conservative force in order to try to make, in order to try to make it the liber liberating force that it can be under definite so social conditions. Today, it seems to me that it is necessary to take the risk of appearing to justify the existing state of gender relationship by showing that women, as they have been constituted and gendered being, uh, excuse me, as they have been constituted as gendered being by the social world, can contribute to their own domination. This, not for the ple pleasure of disenchanting or appearing more clever than, than more clever than everyone else, but to increase the possibility of effecting the symbolic revolution, which is the condition of a true transformation of gender, gender relations. The question I was faced with then was the following, how to transform such an exercise in transcendental reflection into an empirical question, an anthropological experiment in the sense of the German Erfahrung that can be controlled, repeated, replicated by, by opposition to an experience, uh, in the sense of Erlebnis, of the masculine and the feminine, which by definition can be neither falsified nor replicated. To escape this infernal circle, wherein we unconsciously take as instrument of analysis of masculine domination, the unconscious masculine categories produced by this domination, I decided to start from the anthropological analysis of the particular historical case, as I did in my study of Homo Academicus, Academicus uh, in which I used an in-depth study of the French university system in the 60s to try and uncover, uncover the invariance of the modern academic mind and universe. This case is the world of the Kabyles of Algeria, among whom I did field work in the 50s and 60s to describe the objective structure of the social universe of the Kabyles. Is that to describe the objective structure of the social universe of the Kabyles? Is at the same time to describe the mental structure of the observer, that is my own mental structure as a man born in the neo-Mediterranean cultural tradition. Cavilia offers a unique terrain in which to carry out this experimental exercise in self-social analysis, or if you allow the, an, expression that, an expression that will perhaps sound oxymor oxymoronic uh, to some, an exercise in experimental criticist philosophy for a variety of historical reasons that would be too long to enumerate, this peasant society is a, in the mountains of Algeria was until recently a kind of anthropological sanctuary where ancient Mediterranean traditions and modes of thought had been preserved at a fairly high degree of practical, practical coherence and integrity. Ethnological studies on honor and shame in different societies around the Mediterranean rim, from Greece to Egypt and from Spain to Turkey, show that Cavilia offers a living paradigmatic instantiation of a masculine cosmogony in action, 
that is at once exotic and familiar because it lies behind our own European and even uh, your American cultural tradition. So that by studying up close the rituals and mythical practices of the Kabyles, we may uncover or recover a system of representations or better, a system of principles of vision and division common to the entire Medi Mediterranean civilization and which survives to this day in our mental structure and for part in our social structure. The fallow narcissistic cosmogony, cosmology to which the Kabyle give public and collective display haunts our unconscious, including our scholastic unconscious and the unconscious of the science of the un un unconscious, that is psychoanalysis, as even a cursory analysis of the writing of Freud or Lacan really reveals. Thus, to use ethnological description as an instrument of rupture, just as Goffman went to his thousand slides of gender advertisement, I went back to the ethnographic data I had collected in Cabilia, but which I had only partially analyzed in this regard. I treated the Cabilia case as a sort of aggrandized picture through which we can more easily construct an historical model, but a general model of the fundamental structure of the masculine vision and division of the world. I sought to use this model to explicate how the fallow narcissistic disposition that we can see clearly in the case of the Kabil have been deposited, inscribed within the bodies of the men and women of contemporary Western societies, but in distorted, pastoral, mutilated forms at the cost of gaps, discrepancies, substitutions, and inconsistencies. To give an analogy, I hope to put myself in the situation of someone who is trying to reassemble and make sense of the remaining fam fragments of, the, of a great fallen monument by using a map or a blueprint left by those who built it. In this respect, the experiment worked so far, insofar as it later allowed me to recover from Virginia Woolf to the lighthouse analysis of the masculine gaze, gaze that I could not have detected had I not reread re -read it uh, for eyes informed by the, Kabyl, uh, by the Kabyl vision. There was another secondary but nevertheless important use of this ethnological detour. To submit the innumerable contending theories of gender to the acid of the Kabyl test, if I may put it thus, so as to discern those that are scholastic artifacts of what Barbara Christian calls the race for theory, from those that bring to light genuinely new aspects of social historical reality. At the risk of seeming arrogant, I will confess that I also hoped that through this methodological device and following the logic of a, of a historical founded model, I would be able to propose a systematic account of gender domination that would integrate the best of the is existing works of the, on these topics were works which I read, for most of them, only exposed after having conducted my own inquiry for fear that it would be diverted in directions stipulated by the masculine con unconscious of which all of which par partake. Now I would like to mention briefly a few of the main substantive results of the detailed anthropological analysis of the Kabyle case. First, what we can see most clearly in the case of social universe where sexuality, in the sense we give to this term, has not been constituted as such and autonomized from other realms. I think that is an important uh, property uh, uh, that we discover ab ab about our world, uh, the fact that uh, in uh, pre-capitalist societies, undifferentiated society, uh, what we call sexuality, and which is, uh, uh, which is mostly visible in the limiting cases uh, of uh, limiting cases of eroticism or uh, pornography, 
sexuality as such is not constitu constituted as such, is not uh, uh, made aut autonomous. It uh, remains involved into uh, uh, all the logic of practices. Uh, it's involved into agrarian practices, into uh, cosmo cosmo uh, cosmology, uh, into any, uh, all the aspects of the, of the world. And one of the errors, in my view, of most of the analysis of uh, sexuality and uh, of uh, gender domin uh, domination uh, come from the fact that we forget uh, uh, the degree to which uh, 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 gender relationships and especially sexual relationships remain involved in uh, a full set of uh, uh, logical and sociological relationships. So I come back to this point. So uh, in, in the case of Kabilia, what is uh, evident is that sexual differences are both inserted and, and submerged within a system of anthropological and cosmological uh, oppositions that are constitutive of a vision and experience of the world. These differences partake of a sexualized or gendered cosmology which incarnates itself in the sexual topology of the socialized body, of its comportment, his behavior, spatiality, uh, in spatiality, its, its motility. Uh, for instance, uh, I could develop at length uh, all the implicit pro pro properties which are involved in the opposition between high and low, and, and especially within the mo movement from low to high, which is by definition uh, masculine, being related to erection, to, to uh, domination, to uh, domina the do dominated position in sexual act, and so on and so on. So that is an example of this uh, uh, profound involvement of uh, any uh, uh, opposition to the uh, full system of opposition. While any particular sexual difference is arbitrary, when taken in isolation, much like a phoneme, the opposition masculine-feminine is endowed with objective and subjective necessity by, by the fact that it is entangled in, supported of, or, and supported by an inexhaustible and inexplicable system of homologous oppositions that reinforce one another between high and low, above and below, before and behind, left and right, straight and crooked, uh, in both the physical and the moral sense, and that's another property of the system that you, you go without uh, break, without uh, uh, discontinu discontinuity from the physical to the moral sense of, of the, all these oppositions. Dry and wet, hard and soft, tasty and insipid, bright and dark, inside and outside, etc. To, to make it uh, more uh, convincing. I, I would need to take one of these oppositions and to analyze completely uh, all the uh, anthropological dimension. But to give you a, 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 a Goffmanian example, you know, I, I used to observe then when I have uh, dinner with a woman and I, uh, we order two things, for example, cheese and uh, the sweets, you know. The waiter, every time, you know, there is no uh, one statistical exception. Every time the waiter gives the, the, the uh, salty dishes to the man, to the male, and the uh, sweet dishes uh, to the, the woman. So you, you, you may uh, make observations, and, and you may use all these the opposition, the big one, the, the little one, and so on and so on. So it could be uh, an experimental sociology, you know. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, so wh when the, the, this, uh, the, the fact that the uh, opposition are inserted, included in a system of opposition is very important because uh, as uh, in a linguistic system, in a language, you know, in long, you know, in, in sense of saussure, uh, every uh, 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 phoneme, all this, uh, which is by itself uh, arbitrary, uh, uh, take his necessity from his uh, belonging to, to a system, everybody knows that. But 
uh, when you uh, uh, refer to, to a, a practical system of oppositions, you know, it's uh, very impressive to see how uh, the, the, the insertion within a system exerts uh, an effect, what I could call an effect of necessitation. It makes necessary uh, through, uh, um, you have a, an effect of necessitation through systematicity. And this effect of necessitation through systematicity is redoubled reinforced by a second effect, what I could call uh, uh, natural confirmation. So uh, I, I begin by the example. When I was a child in my village, uh, people at that time of the year used to say that it was always rain on Good Friday, you know. And uh, uh, there, there is a different uh, methodology, for, you know, from here. But uh, the, uh, they observed that it was always raining, and they uh, would see in this coincidence the natural verification of the religious belief. You know, it rains and so on. So uh, this effect of natural verif uh, 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 pseudo natural verification is very very important to uh, explain the strength of the beliefs and. Uh, uh, and uh, 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 what is important is that the, the opposition between uh, male and f uh, masculine and feminine things, uh, this opposition is correspond uh, 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 um, geographical oppositions, biological cycles, uh, agrarian or co cosmic cycles, and so on. And in this manner, the hierarchical binary opposition between male and female appears founded on in the nature of things because it is echoed virtually everywhere. Uh, and uh, so I think it's a, this uh, effect is very important to understand uh, how strongly this opposition is inserted in social reality. And we have uh, 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 the equivalent in our society. Uh, the gender division inscribed in the social order of things, the division of the day, uh, of the, uh, the calendar of the agrarian activity, the division of the space, for instance, uh, the division of the house, uh, and the opposition between the house and the uh, masculine assembly, uh, uh, the internal division of the house with its masculine part and, and feminine part, uh, the masculine part with fire and feminine uh, part with uh, uh, wet things and so on and so on. Uh, these objective divisions become inscribed into bodies in the form of permanent dispositions uh, and uh, become subjective principles of vision or cognitive categories through which individuals come to see and construct the world as meaningful lived reality. Being issued out of the world, such categories of perception are, uh, one should say, schemes. The category is too intellectualist, uh, but uh, it's to be uh, being issued out of the world. Such uh, schemes of perception are in accordance with the objective order of the things and incline us to take the world as a given, to take the world as granted. This spontaneous agreement of the social structure and cognitive structure, when it occurs, is the basis of the doxic experience of masculine domination as inscri inscribed in the nature of things invisible and questioned. In the Kabyle world, and in our own until quite recently, that is until the second feminist revolution came, masculine order is so deeply grounded as to need no justification. It imposes itself as self-evident universal. A third mechanism of reinforcement of the opposition, uh, gendered socialization. The work of socialization closes the circle, by the circle by reinforcing and systematizing the structuring of the experience of a world structured according to this original division. Education exercises a psychosomatic action leading to the somatization of sexual differences, that is, of masculine domination. One particularly important domain of application of this work of psychosomatic inculcation is the embodied construction of, of social differences between the sexes. This uh, construction uh, operates uh, via, via different, several means. First, what I call rights of institutions, 
rather than rites of passage, like cir circumcision, uh, these rites mark the opposition not between a bit before and an after, as the notion of rites of passage suggests, uh, be between youth, youth, youth and adulthood, but rather between those who participate in the rites, uh, men, and those who do not, women. Uh, uh, in our so society, uh, one could show that sports play a similar, a very, very similar role uh, of uh, constitution, of institutionalization of uh, gender divisions. Second uh, process of construction, the construction of the social, body, of the biological body. That is the uh, symbolic remaking, reworking of anat anatomical differences. Uh, I collected a lot of data about that. You know, I, I, I asked questions at length with uh, men and women about how uh, sexual uh, organs are perceived, how, how they are named, and so on, so on, so on. And uh, one may see that uh, the anatomical difference uh, is uh, uh, socially constructed, socially, socially elaborated, and that they, they are struggled about, about uh, anatomic differences. But the, I don't develop this point, but the, the uh, important thing is the uh, ideological or symbolic mechanism. I want to, to summarize in one sentence. The socially constructed body serves as an ideological foundation for the arbitrary opposition through which it was itself constructed. If you want, the, the body is constructed according to a position between uh, low and high, erected or, uh, or, or uh, move, uh, uh, plastic, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, so, and uh, this, uh, all these opposition uh, are used to, to construct the, 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 the anatomic organs. And uh, the anatomic organs uh, being constructed uh, as such become uh, principles of construction and, and even more of legitimation of social construction, which are in fact based, uh, uh, basing, uh, you know. So you have a reverse, that it was of the uh, classical uh, ideological mechanism, this reversion of the cause and, uh, and the effect. It's much more complex than what we say uh, when we say it is a naturalization. So the work of socialization, uh, socialization tends to affect a progressive somatization of relations of gender domination through uh, twofold operation. First, by means of the social construction of the vision of biological organs, which itself serves, serves at, at the foundation of all mythical visions of the world. Second, through the inculcation of a bodily axis, a bodily demeanor, a bodily manner of, 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 do, of doing, which constitutes a, a true embodied politics. So, Masculine sociodicy, I use this word sociodicy, I coined it uh, using theodicy, sociodicy, a justification of society, it's, a very, it's better than ideology, which is a very dangerous word in my view. But masculine sociodicy thus owes its exceptional efficacy to the fact that it accumulates and condensates two operations. First, it legitimates, it legitimates a relation of domination by inscribing it in a biological nature that is itself an actualized social construction. It legitimates a relation of domination by describing it in a biological, which is itself a biologized, it's difficult, bi biologized, bi biologized social construction. Yeah. Uh, when one likes to play with words, it's terrible in a foreign language. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I, I tend to describe this, uh, this um, 
uh, this system of opposition as completely obscure for people who uh, are uh, kept in it. You know. In fact, the, the arbitrary character of the division is never completely obscured. And uh, as I could observe by uh, uh, questioning, especially women, you know, uh, myself or by proxy through uh, friends who conducted a, sur uh, a survey that I could not uh, do myself as a male, you know. So uh, they, they, there are symbolic struggles over the representations of the organs, you know, and there's a, a feminine folklore, uh, which is a, a, a kind of uh, inversion of, of the uh, masculine phallonarcissistic vision, you know. But in fact, as an inversion, it, it, it's, uh, it's dominated by, by the value, uh, uh, it, it tends to, 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 uh, to subvert, you know, and, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, one of the principles of this, uh, of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, ideological strategy is the fact of saying to the male they are not what they pretend to be, you know, and uh, so. Uh, third process, uh, uh, the, operation, the, the, the operation of social construction uh, 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 takes as a, as a main object maybe the sexual act as such. So uh, I recor rec recorded uh, uh, different uh, uh, the Kabyles uh, uh, don't uh, uh, are not uh, uh, don't create uh, me. You know they, they they have very few myths. I have found two, and both were related to masculine feminine division. One was about uh, uh, sewing uh, when the. Uh, uh, the the male was sewing, you know, and he had uh, uh, corn, the blade, uh, corn, and uh, the the female wanted to imitate him, and uh, she she made the sewing, and and, and the, the she had uh, barley, you know, she she uh, 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 yeah. so that one was one. The other one uh, was uh, uh, about uh, uh, mythology to justify the fact that in sexual art. Uh, male uh, must take the dominant uh, upper position, you know. So I don't uh, tell it is very funny, but it's very long. So uh, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I would need a lot of vocab vocabulary and so on. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the, the sexual act is constructed, you know, the, the through myths, through through riddles, through a lot of lot of uh, discourses. You know. Sexual art is constructed in such a way that the man must be above uh, and uh, on the top, on top, and the woman underneath. The sexual art is const so sexual act is uh, or originally constructed as an act of domination, an act of possession, possession, uh, taking of woman by man. The same applies to homosexual relationships. Uh, where the opposition top bottom is replaced by the opposition front back, which is a, another main opposition of the Mediterranean societies. Fourth operation of construction: uh, the construction of the differential uses of the body, uh, of the mobility, deportment, and and the rights of this. And, and I want to insist upon, uh, as an homage to Nancy Chodorov, uh, about uh, one. Uh, uh, aspect of, of the Kabir ritual, I didn't understand at the beginning. My informants insisted upon that, and I, you know, I was, uh, well, I, I did the record and take note, but I didn't understand why they paid such attention to that. They call that a ritual of dissociation from the mind, uh, and they are rituals which are uh, uh, made, you know, uh, at after the. Uh, the birth, yeah, for the birth of the child, for example, uh, the, the, there are different rituals to separate a boy from her, his mother, uh, many of which involve the use of cutting objects. You know, you, you, the mother uh, lays on the right side, uh, and the boy is on his right side, and in between you put. Uh, uh, knives, uh, you put uh, 
uh, plowing, uh, uh, things uh, 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 made by, by the Smith for the uh, by Black Smith, yes, and, uh, and uh, u using fire, you know. So the, the uh, knives, uh, what other things? So, uh, and uh, after birth, the baby boy is de deposited to the mother's right, the masculine side, where typically lie masculine objects such as large knife, a plough, plough. Uh, and the stone from the fireplace, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, uh, another example of this uh, rituals of separation is the first cut of the hair of the baby boy, uh, which is uh, of, uh, 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 surrounded of, of a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, ceremony, uh, is the father who cuts the hair, which is a feminine feature, and uh, uh, which uh, attaches the boy to the world of women. Another example is the father who, who first takes a young son between ages of six and ten to the market and uh, that is introduces him into the typically uh, masculine world uh, and into the games of vi uh, virile honor. Uh, uh, the child is dressed in new clothing and wears a silk belt. The belt is very important because the, part, the, the, the uh, garment will divide the body in two parts, uh, the good part and the bad part, mas uh, masculine part and feminine part and so on. And, uh, and, so, uh, and uh, he, he receives a, a knife, again, a padlock and a mirror, and at the door, at, not at the door, at the entrance of the, of the marketplace, uh, the young son breaks an egg and opens a padlock to acts of viral defloration. You know. His father guides him into the marketplace and introduces him to the other participants of this exclusive masculine world. And here we could uh, invoke uh, Sherry Ortner, you know, because we are in the uh, prestige uh, logic you know, of uh, masculine, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the, of the basis of all the masculine domination. Uh, on their way home, the father and, and son, father and son, by the head of a bull, a phallic symbol, closely linked to Nif. Nif is the point of honor in Kabylia. Uh, the, the, they buy a, a bull, the, the head of a bull, which will be eaten on night, you know, in a very solemn, and so on. So, uh, I don't develop, but I think all these rituals uh, that uh, could be analyzed in, in detail um, uh, 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 have in common to uh, to create a symbolic break, uh, uh, a socially organized break between uh, the masculine world and the feminine world, between the boy and his uh, mother. Uh, and uh, I think uh, from this uh, confrontation of the analysis that were, was proposed, uh, 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 starting from psychoanalytical uh, theory, you know, and the kind of observations I, I, I propose, uh, starting from an uh, anthropological uh, uh, position, one could uh, uh, have a nice discussion, but concrete and not uh, wordy, about uh, uh, relationship between psychoanalysis and anthropology, or more precisely, between uh, 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 socialization and uh, 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 an analysis of the process according to which uh, 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 libido is socialized and constructed, uh, socially constructed, uh, uh, and so on. So I, I don't develop it to, to make explicit that, that one could uh, overcome one of the division of the analysis uh, of uh, masculine domination, which in my view, uh, retard, uh, retard, retard, uh, the, uh, yes, the, the, the the research. You know. Another uh, important thing in, in this uh, observa these observations is the fact that to uh, proceed uh, continuously without any break uh, from uh, virility uh, to honor, you know, so uh, manliness. Uh, manliness is at the same time uh, virility in biological sense, you know, in the most uh, evidently bi biological sense, especially in uh, women's uh, talk, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's clear, you know. Uh, and at the same time, um, uh, manliness, what Kabyles call Sakbailis. Sakbailis means uh, like a cability, the fact of being Kabyle, uh, you know. 
uh, the fact of being Kabil is uh, the, the honor, you know. Uh, virility is a, is a biological uh, competence, uh, power, if you want. And at the same time, uh, uh, symbolic competence, uh, symbolic power. And uh, uh, manliness, even now, you know, in, uh, when you look at the uh, historical studies about the, the, the boarding schools in England, you know, in the 19th century, you know, you know, manliness and so. Uh, so, uh, you, you, you uh, I don't think of Mo Morality and politics are inscribed in the body and uh, uh, all the, uh, the honor, uh, the more, uh, all the ethic of honor. Uh, is included in one verb that uh, Kabil, uh, Kabil uh, uh, used to, uh, to use uh, to, to express the, uh, the, the masculinity, the manliness, is the verb Kabel. Uh, it means uh, to Kabel is the same family as Kibla. Kibla is uh, la, the, uh, the Mecca direction, uh, the east direction. And uh, Kabel is to to make faith, to, to confront, to look somebody at the, at, at the, at the front, uh, uh, at the, uh, the reverse is to, to, to show your back, you know, to, to, which is a, a feminine attitude, you know. So to be a, a male, you know, uh, is to be able to confront other males, you know, in an agonistic and to look at them uh, to the eyes, you know, without lowering eyes, that is a feminine attitude which is uh, uh, taught to and so on. So uh, uh, you, you have, uh, he, uh, with this verb, cavil, you have a connection between uh, uh, cosmology, uh, eastern and west. Uh, west is a feminine direction, as, uh, and uh, you have uh, 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 in a structuralist tradition, you know, these opposition are described as logical opposition. But uh, what I try to do, uh, and this is related to what I'll say after, uh, I try to, to substitute to uh, static oppositions, you know, static linguistic opposition, I try to substitute uh, body, bodily op uh, movement, you know, to uh, low, uh, high, I substitute mov movement from low to high, you know, uh, from, uh, you know and, and the, uh, as soon as you substitute movement, you know, uh, you have uh, at the same time uh, acts, uh, uh, values, and so on and so on. So, uh, this, uh, what I summarized uh, roughly, is a uh, work of inculcation at once uh, sexually differentiated and sexually differentiating. This double work of inculcation imposes upon men and women different sets of dispositions, different sets of habitus, uh, which with rigor, rigor to the social games held to be crucial to society, such as the games of honor, which are typically masculine, war for the display of masculinity, virility, or in advance of society, all the most valued games such as politics, business, science, and so on and so on. The masculinization of male bodies and feminization of female bodies affects a somatization of the cultural arbitrary, which is a durable construction of the unconscious. So the, the socialization transforms uh, Dom, uh, domination into habitus, and uh, th that is permanent manner of being, of seeing the world, and so on. And uh, having said that, I want to the main thing in my view, uh, uh, that is that uh, you one must understand uh, masculine domination as symbolic violence. And so uh, uh, I'll try to, to make that explicit before. Yeah. Uh, when, whenever, whenever the dominated, that is here women, but it's true to uh, of any category of, of dominated person, uh, whenever the dominated uh, apply to objects of the natural and social world, and in particular to the relation of domination in which they are ens ensnared, as well as to the person through which this re relation realizes itself, men, but also other women. Uh, whenever the dominators do that, uh, well, excuse me, my sentence was too long to be read <laughs> by me. <laughs> so, 
Yes, I, I tried. Uh, the, uh, w w whenever uh, somebody uh, who is in a dominated position uh, uses to uh, perceive uh, the relation of domination of the pers persons exerting domination, uh, principle of perception, which is a product of the internalization of the relation of domination, uh, he sees this relation as evident, as trivial, as uh, normal. And that happens in many, many uh, situations. For example, I can give an immediate example. One of the main obstacles when you conduct surveys about culture, at least in France, uh, is the fact that as soon as you ask a question about culture, cultural competence, uh, people without uh, cultural competence uh, uh, manifest uh, cultural, cultural shame. You know? they, they, they hide, they don't know, they may uh, rougir, they may uh, blush, blush, you know, they, they, they are, uh, they, you know, they have a lot of emotions. You know? And in fact, uh, the, the, the most of, of the effects of uh, symbolic violence are emotions or passions or, or, or body, uh, love among them, you know. They, they, they are, uh, uh, these uh, uh, acts of Cognition, because when you are in, uh, to, to, to be uh, in the uh, symbolic uh, domain means to be in the cognitive, uh, in a place in which uh, uh, the, the, uh, you have cognition and cogn cognitive effects. You know, so when uh, uh, acts of cognition uh, are operated in such a condition, uh, they are inevitably acts of misrecognition. This misrecognition leads the dominated persons to construe this uh, relation of domination from the standpoint of the dominant. That is as natural and thereby to collude in their own domination via the complicity of the socialized body. And this complicity of the socialized body is expressed not in terms of consciousness, but in terms of emotion, of passion, and so on. These bodily acts of misrecognition are not uh, conscious acts. They are not operations of consciousness. They operate under the guise of emotion. Uh, what 18th century philosopher used to call passion. You know. And uh, one of the mistakes that uh, feminists, some feminists, uh, commit, you know, uh, 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 the same as some uh, Marxists, uh, uh, is the fact that they describe domination processes in terms of consciousness. And they think that uh, through rising of consciousness, uh, prise de conscience, you, know, you may save the people or the women and so on. But if it's not a matter of consciousness, but a, a matter of body, a matter of uh, disposition, and so on, con consciousness is not very p powerful. For example, when uh, you are uh, shy, you know, what does it mean? Uh, I think statistical, uh, statistically, shyness is very inequally distributed according to social position and according to social origins, you know, and according to gender. So if uh, uh, Chinese is so difficult to win, you know, uh, at any age, in, in any position, and so on, is because it's, a, uh, uh, it's related to body and not to consciousness. And you may say, well, you, you are stupid to, to, to be afraid. Uh, why? You know, and so on. It doesn't make any effect. You know? so <laughs> the, uh, and uh, all the, all the philosophy of the antique, uh, philosopher of the 18th century, all the reflection, as soon as you say, uh, uh, passions uh, equals uh, uh, disposition, you may uh, uh, recuperate, you say that, you may uh, recover reco all the reflection of the philosopher of uh, 17th century, like uh, Leibniz or Descartes or, or Spinoza, uh, both passions, you know, to uh, describe what happens to us. So for example, Leibniz said you can't fight against a passion uh, uh, by reason. Reason uh, is uh, without any power to fight against the passion. The, the only thing is to fight a passion uh, with another passion, you know, if, and, and or to use what he called oblique, oblique will, you know, uh, to to try to. Uh, you know. 
And uh, so another thing I could develop is uh, the, the, the connection between love and, uh, uh, and uh, symbolic domination. That would be a uh, long analysis, but I, I give you only a, uh, the summary uh, kind of motto, you know, is uh, uh, amor, uh, amor in the Latin stance, you know, is amor fati, you know, amor is amor fati, you know, the, the, the Stoicians said, uh, they, they preached amor fati, you, you must love your, your fate, you know, your, your destiny. You know. And uh, in a sense, uh, when we love, we love our destiny. And homogamy in our society, you know, is, uh, 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 you know, and uh, uh, I could develop that uh, I stop at this point. Uh, so, uh, indeed, the, the case of gender domination shows better than any other that uh, symbolic violence accomplishes itself through an act of cognition and of misrecognition which lies beyond or beneath the contours of consciousness and will in the obscurities of the schemata of habitus that are once gendered and gendering. And it demonstrates that we cannot adequately understand masculine domination and symbolic violence more generally <laughs> without forsaking entirely the scholastic opposition between co coercion and consent, external imposition and internal desire, constraint and resistance. Uh, all these oppositions are, in my view, uh, are, are, are artificial opposition. But but however, however close the agreement between the objective division of the social world and the subjective principles of vision that agents apply to it, there is always room for cognitive struggles. I don't come back to this point. So uh, the, the theory of symbolic uh, violence that uh, I take from the Cadillian material, from the, 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 the in my view, from which is offered to us by, by, the, the, uh, by this uh, historical uh, example, uh, this, uh, this theory differs from other theories in two major ways, and I, I develop very uh, fast these two points. First, it is predicated on a dispositional philosophy or theory of action, which dispositional uh, by opposition to uh, consci conscience uh, philosophy. Uh, dispositional theory of action which can be deployed only by forsaking the philosophy of the subject which uh, is being reincarnated under the fuzzy label of agency. Men and women construct the social world, all right, but they do so with forms and categories that are constructed by the world. Everybody says that, but they expect. With which they neither choose nor make or of which they are not the subjects. When we say that the gender, race, class, social categories, and distinction are socially constructed, we must not forget that there are that there are social conditions and mechanisms of construction of the constructor. And uh, for example, uh, then that one uh, one of the most important uh, constructor of the constructor is the state. Uh, in modern societies, the state which, uh, uh, via uh, uh, legitimate uh, identities, of official identities of gender, race, ethnicity, nationality, contribute to the construction or the instruments of construction we apply to reality. Uh, and when ethnomethodologists uh, uh, insist upon, and uh, they are right, the fact that we must uh, 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 understand that we construct social reality, they forget that the constructors are constructed, and we are constructed uh, as constructors by uh, social structures. Who so there is no contradiction between uh, structuralism and constructivism. Uh, you may, uh, if you remember, that uh, when you construct uh, categories using opposition, high and low, and so on, so on, you use categories with, which were. Uh, uh, inserted in your mind, in your mind, in your body, uh, by uh, uh, social mechanism. I try to describe in the case of Cavilia. And so you were constructed as a constructor. Uh, the same with nationality, the same with ethnicity, the same with any, with, uh, any kind of family. So, so mas masculine order is inscribed in both institutions and agents, positions and dispositions, things and words, uh, uh, on the one hand, and bodies in the other, and masculinity is switched, uh, is teached, excuse me, into the habitus, 
into all habitus, those of men and those of women. So uh, the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the masculinity is inserted in everybody's body uh, is very important because it gives a, a kind of uh, objectivity in, uh, uh, to, to, uh, and uh, universality uh, to these uh, uh, categories. They, 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 they may be seen as uh, Kantian universal categories as, uh, 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 because uh, everybody partakes these categories. And, uh, and uh, to use the language of, of Durkheim, you know, uh, Durkheim uh, uh, said we have a moral conformism and moral conformism we are conscious, you know, uh, most of often, um, in part, you know. but the most invisible conformism is what he call logical conformism, the, 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 the fact that uh, conformism which uh, is a result of the fact that we use the same logical categories co to construct the world. Yes. So when uh, postmodern people come with this kind of things, as if, if they were discovered yesterday, you know, you must look at the bibliography. So, uh, <laughs> So they, 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 they construct uh, the, the, the logical conformism stems from the fact that we are constructed as constructed agents uh, through and so on. And being constructed uh, uh, in the same way, we have a, a, a transcendental uh, mind, if you want, uh, uh, common. Uh, uh, mode of thinking, which being common to all the persons uh, uh, of society, uh, have uh, uh, permanent validity by this uh, confirmation, uh, this mutual confirmation. That is another very important effect. Uh, for that reason, the, the fact of breaking the conform uh, logic conformism is very important. In that sense, feminism was a very, very important thing because it was the first uh, uh, main uh, break of the not only of moral conformism uh, it was it could have been better but it, it was first break of the logical conformism uh, and that uh, which is much more difficult to 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 work so second presupposition of the theory of the symbolic violence second uh, the uh, 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 second uh, yes second basis if you want a materialist analysis of the symbolic order, order. Most theories of gender proceed either from a materialist analysis of the material order or from the symbolic analysis of symbolism. What I propose is to import the materialist mode of thinking into the analysis of the symbolic universe, just as Weber uh, imported in, uh, the, the, this mode of thinking into sociology of religion. The study of masculine domination highlights the severe shortcomings of materialist theories of domination. These shortcomings are especially visible in the case of pre-capitalist societies in which symbolic capital is a prominent form of power, according to me. Anthropologists such as Sherry Ortner have shown that one cannot understand sexual practices and meaning, meanings without taking into account the fact that, that masculine action is always oriented towards prestige. But to draw the full implication of this finding, one cannot rely on a symbolic analysis of the symbolic order. We need a materialist theory of the economy of symbolic goods and symbolic exchanges. exchanges. Masculine domination, uh, I go too fast, but uh, masculine domination is a final analysis, is founded upon the logic of the economy of symbolic exchanges, that is upon the fundamental asymmetry between men and women instituted in the social construction of kinship and marriage, uh, that between subject and object, agent and instrument. And uh, what I should do is to try to show how this uh, uh, division may perpetuate itself uh, in a distorted form in our society. It is a relative autonomy of the economy of symbolic capital which explains that masculine domination can perpetuate itself despite transformations of the mode of production. It follows that the liberation of women can come only from a collective action aimed at a symbolic struggle capable of challenging the immediate agreement uh, of embodied and objective structure that is from a symbolic revolution which questions the very foundations of the production and reproduction of symbolic capital. So, in conclusion, 
as fast as possible. Uh, uh, it, it is not, uh, as you may suppose, it is not possible in, in such a brief talk to say everything and to say it in the right order, especially uh, on such a thorny and uh, contentious topic. But I would like to close by suggesting three functions that this analysis of the Kabil case can play when we transfer and apply it to the understanding of contemporary society. First, this model can serve as a detector to locate and gather the infinitesimal traces and the scattered but uh, ubiquitous fragments of the androcentric world, androcentric world view. It allows us to better understand the systematic character of masculine domination. I think masculine domination operates as a system. That maybe is one of the main things I would uh, insist upon. Um, uh, it allows us to better understand the systematic character of masculine domination and how it comes to constitute male et heterosexual rule as a natural given. Second, the analysis of the Kabil case as a realized ideal type provides a benchmark for measure, measuring change and challenge on each of the dimensions of masculine domination I have briefly discussed. Third, the notion of symbolic violence enables us to anticip anticipate under what conditions a genuine gender revolution might become possible. It would have to be a symbolic revolution that is involved not only uh, an overturning of the order of things, of material structures, but also a mental revolution, the transformation of the categories of perception that lead us to collude with the perpetuation of the social order. To conclude, I would not like to appear to partake of the race for theory that I deplored earlier. But our topic is a very serious one with immense intellectual and political consequences. In my view, we stand at, uh, we stand at a historical crossroad today as critical reason is in jeopardy both outside the university and also inside. Today, feminism which, which has the possibility of being one of the most powerful weapons of critical reason is in danger of being inoffensive and irrelevant by its contamination by, by with what is called in the United States postmodernism. <laughs> now, it is not the anthropologist of Cabilia, but the sociologist of the university and of French university uh, and of the foreign trade in ideas who will speak. Remember that theories, like all symbolic goods, owe many of their key properties to their social conditions of production and circulation. The academic world within which this vague and woolly academic discourses that passes itself as postmodernism has its hierarchies, this, uh, this system has its hierarchies, his forms of hege hegemony and imperialism. Feminism must liberate itself from the domination of the most masculine of all canonical disciplines, philosophy, and secondarily of philosophically inspired literary theory. This is especially necessary when most of what feminism bor borrows from postmodern philosophy was itself borrowed, but surreptitiously, from the social sciences. I could give you examples. Uh, I take only one. To de denaturalize is to defatalize that is repeated. Uh, uh, this idea is as old as the world or at least as old as Marxism. That reality, that reality is socially constructed or discursively constructed is a fundamental proposition of classical social science common to Marx, Weber, Durkheim, anybody else. Not a recent discovery and a monopoly of so-called postmodernism. Instead of really relying on deconstruction, feminism should deconstruct deconstruction. De deconstruction. <laughs> it would then discover that the, late, the latter has transported into feminism the illusion of the omnipotence of thought, 
which is constitutive of the typically masculine unconscious of philosophy. This illusion, in turn, is fueling the illusion typical of what I call campus radicalism, that one changes the world, the world by changing words, that the subversion of terms, categories, discourses suffices to subvert objective structures of domination. And I will close with a remembrance of a conversation I had with Irving Goffman in front of the Maison des Sciences de l'Homme, how appropriated, uh, shortly before his death. He spoke about the need to wage a collective battle against the social abuses of social sciences. Today, we need to wage this struggle also, uh, also against the forces that, wor that work to reestablish re the hegemony of bad philosophy over the social sciences at a time when more than ever before we need the tools of critical reason to counter the rationalization of domination. Thank you. break to allow people who want to leave uh, the room now to be able to leave before we start the discussion part of today's uh, first Goffman Prize lecture.
Okay. Uh, we will ask the people who are standing in the alleys to try to gain, uh, go to a seat and sit down so that we can discuss, uh, start the discussion part of the first Gotham Prize lecture. So the, so the floor is open for questions. If you can try to shout your question, I mean, I'll try to repeat it. So try to make your questions brief and intelligible. The question is that in the first part of the speech, Professor Bourdieu suggested that feminism was affecting a revolution of categories, and then later he suggested we need to move away from simply changing the world by trying to change words. And so could he explain the differences yeah. between the two? No, I, 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 it's, a, it's a difficult question. I, I was conscious, I can tell it, you know, that, that uh, there was something like a little contradiction. Uh, and uh, uh, but I, I, I must say that uh, uh, in my view, uh, a symbolic revolution, that is the, the, the change of, of, of the mental, mental structure. You know, it's, a, it's a necessary condition, but uh, it's not a sufficient condition. But, but as uh, masculine uh, domination is, belongs to uh, is a, cat a subcategory of uh, uh, symbolic uh, uh, domination, uh, as such, uh, the, uh, the any kind of uh, su 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 subversive action uh, must uh, uh, insist upon the uh, changes in the uh, mental structure and so on. But mental structure are uh, uh, at the same time uh, incorporate into bodies, but into objective reality. They are incorporated into the division of labor, they are incorporated into the discipline, into, for example, in university, uh, uh, as I suggested, uh, at the end, you have masculine and feminine di uh, discipline. You, you, uh, there is a beautiful article by, by uh, Wood, of, uh, of which I forgot, forgot the author, uh, about uh, soft and hard uh, disciplines, you know, uh, and uh, s soft uh, disciplines are uh, feminine discipline uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, the, in our minds, uh, but at the same time in objective reality. When you look at the statistics of the distribution, uh, distribution of uh, uh, men, male and w uh, men and women uh, in the different disciplines, you know, uh, you, you see a, a, a quasi-perfect correspondence between how our, our intuition of disciplines, the intuition which is that uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, the determinant of our, our, our vocational choices, for example. You know, where, for example, uh, sociology is masculine and psychology is feminine. You know, it's an opposition between public and the private. You know, it's, it's, and we have this opposition in mind. We, we, and we, when we say, I, I die for sociology, you know, uh, in fact, uh, 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 it's a masculine uh, choice uh, and I don't know it. You know, and, and, uh, uh, but this uh, masculine choice is reinforced and uh, uh, positively sanctioned by the fact that if I go into sociology, I will uh, find males. You know, and for example, when we, we, you conduct interviews with young girls who, who are uh, in, uh, in a discipline or, or in a track, you know, in an academic uh, career, you know, in which, uh, 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 which, which is seen as non-masculine, non-feminine, non you know, uh, uh, the evident thing is, is she, she feels alone. She's a, uh, she's a, I, I had an interview with a young girl of, of 16. You know, she, she was the only girl among uh, boys. You know. 
And uh, so she described that. You know, she said, I come back every, every night and I, I cry. I say to my father, I, I can't stay, it's too difficult. Uh, she was not you know, harassed you know, in any manner. No, she was uh, uh, in a very strange position. You know. Everything uh, did uh, uh, recall her that she should not be there. You know. She was so improbable. You know. So that's another thing, you know, but the same with uh, people f coming from the lower class, you know, when they go into places in which they, sh they should not be, uh, they are recalled at every moment that they should not be there. The same with uh, uh, Afri uh, Afri African uh, uh, American uh, students who are uh, the only one, you know, so they, they are so exceptional, they, 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 must, uh, they may have the feeling of being miraculous, you know, for example, one of the, of the effects for people coming from lower background when they achieve, when they go to Cambridge or to, to such place, you know, they feel they are geniuses, you know, they, 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 and that, that's a manner of feeling them, you know, they, 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 and so on. Uh, so, uh, you, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, for that reason, to change mental category, you must change uh, the objective structure who, who, which produce these mental categories, and, and uh, uh, to change the objective structure, you must change uh, mental categories, so because the mental category, co co uh, with the reproduction of mental category contributes contribute to reproduce objective categories, uh, by, by the fact that people, for example, they reproduce the, the discipline hierarchy. Uh, by thinking, but for example, uh, Goffman, my allusion at the beginning to, to Goffman, uh, he was in front of me the first time we met. He, tell, he told me, look, uh, you are a French scholar, so you must be good at, at philosophy. And by chance, you know, he was not uh, too postmodern, and so he, he did he not pay too much attention to French philosophy, and so he did good work. You know. <laughs> <laughs> The question is, uh, from Professor Wood, you mentioned the notion of dark side. He's talked about sexuality being autonomized in our own societies and not being autonomized in the pre-capitalist society that he analyzed. And so could he talk about this process of, of autonomization of sexuality? Yes, I, I think it's something I, I discovered, uh, you know, very recently. So I wrote very, very clear about that. I think uh, intuitively, I think it's very, very important. Um, it's something I did not see clearly. Uh, um, uh, but uh, uh, I, I have in mind the, the fact that uh, uh, you know I think it was the same in a peasant European society till, till uh, recently. You know, sexuality uh, as uh, uh, is developed, you know, in cultivated uh, circles, circles, you know. Uh, uh, with the, the, the eroticism as a limit, se 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 sexuality as such, sexuality for sexuality's sake, you know, as are for our sake. Erotism, in a, in a sense, is sexuality for sexuality uh, for what? sake. Yes, you know, uh, this kind of art uh, pour l'art, you know, of uh, of sex, you know, which is. Uh, uh, who, who, uh, which interests so much the postmoderns, you know. Uh, this this uh, this uh, af afula, you know, uh, is uh, related to uh, to s uh, economic and social conditions, very, very special, uh, which are not uh, allowed, you know, which are not present in uh, free capitalist societies, or even in uh, uh, most uh, 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 of the uh, social milieus, you know, uh, till now, in the working class, you know, in uh, peasant, uh, so on, it does not uh, exist as such. And so, uh, the, uh, the sexuality becomes something autonomous, and then uh, by itself, you know, but uh, you, you, you to, to have that, you need to have uh, magazines, uh, uh, um, sex, sexual consultants, you know, I don't know, uh, co counselors, uh, therapists, uh, psychoanalysts, and so on, so on, so on. And, uh, and the vocabulary and the language, a specific language, you know, uh, in a sense, you know, Kabir woman uh, speaks all the time about sexuality and she never speaks 
everything is sexual and nothing is sexual. You know, uh, you look at, uh, you know, the, for example, I, 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 I was uh, uh, asking questions to, to, to a man, you know, and uh, his wife was uh, below, below uh, behind the curtain, a little, you know. And uh, when I asked uh, certain questions, he was laughing at me, you know, because uh, so uh, there the, the were double meanings, you know, and uh, there the were meanings, uh, 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 sexual meanings, you know. Yeah, 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 so, but uh, you know, these the, uh, meanings are not are not constructed. They, they are uh, you you can speak about that uh, in front of children, you know. To when you you make a ritual, it's, 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 they refer to sexual. Uh, yeah. Sexuality in our sense, you know, but it's not sexuality because it's, it's not uh, uh, when you have uh, wall paintings, you know, it's, uh, all the symbols are, are sex, sex, if you want, uh, the, the lamps, uh, to, to the, the lamps, yes. Yes, lamps, you know, uh, are symbolic, uh, the oil is feminine, and so, no, masculine, and so, everything it, it may be described as sexual, but at the same time, it's not uh, uh, separated uh, from uh, the symbolic environment. and. Uh, in such a way that uh, it's yeah so it's not it's not uh, the word uh, verb constituted means that it's not constituted as such you know uh, Max Weber says uh, uh, the w you have a, 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 a the economy becomes economy in our society when economy is seen as uh, uh, as you know, en tant que we say in French, uh, as you know, uh, sexuality as sexuality. You know. uh, that is something new, something historical, in my view. And for that reason, w we are at pains to understand uh, societies in which these things are, uh, and we tend to. And I think, uh, so it would be too long, and I, I, I am not able to, to say that with uh, nuance. You know, so I prefer to stop. When we uh, take the theory of symbolic violence, physical violence tends to fall out of the picture. Uh, for instance, vi police violence, police brutality, or domestic violence. How do we reincorporate uh, physical violence within the theory of symbolic violence? Yes, you know, I think it, uh, that's a very common problem. As soon as you develop you know, uh, uh, theory making visible uh, the symbolic aspect of actions, you know, uh, uh, you uh, twist the, the stick, you know, in the opposite direction. You know, uh, your symbolic vi uh, physical violence it's uh, in a sense evident you know, for the person who, who uh, is submitted to it, and uh, even for the person who <laughs> does uh, operate it. So, and symbolic violence has, has uh, the property of being, in a sense, invisible. There is a violence is a, uh, is a very douce violence, you know, very soft violence that you, you are submitted to without knowing it or, uh, in a sense, uh, loving it, you know. And, for example, cultural domination, you know, is a terrible symbolic violence because the, the people who are uh, uh, self-taught persons, you know, who are uh, uh, deprived of culture, you know, uh, are the, 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 uh, the speci special victims of uh, symbolic uh, violence exerted through a cultural imposition, you know. So, uh, w when you say be, be cautious, you know, symbolic violence is very important. You know. uh, yes, you you are in danger of being seen as forgetting uh, physical violence, but uh, I don't forget it, you know. And and uh, uh, I think that is very important in terms of philosophy of history. I don't like philosophy of history, but because it's very dangerous. But there there are some, uh, you know. Uh, uh, in my view, some uh, tendencies, you know, historical tendencies. You know, people like that, uh, especially here, modernization, rationalization, these, these processes, you know, so vague that nobody uh, may put any sense uh, upon it. But, but uh, so I think there is one uh, tendency uh, 
uh, is there a tendency to substitute symbolic violence to physical violence you know, in, in modern societies? In a sense, for example, Norbert Elias, I admire a lot, you know, he, he, fall into, he fell into this, uh, you know, with this uh, his theory of the civilization process and so on. Uh, I think that, uh, in a sense, uh, the, the Elias uh, philosophy of history is that uh, uh, physical violence uh, did initiate, uh, you know, uh, when he describes the sport uh, uh, ap appearance and so on and so on, you, you have the substitution to, to uh, soft violence. To, to but uh, what, uh, as he forgets uh, the symbolic violence, you know, he does not see that in modern states, for example, you know, uh, the, the many things which were very many uh, impositions which were exerted through, through uh, uh, through, through physical violence, through police, through army, and so on, may be exerted through symbolic violence. And for that reason, many uh, revolutions, many revolts become uh, symbolic revolutions, you know. And, uh, and, um, and um, uh, feminist is one, you know, but uh, uh, some post-colonial revolts are, are a symbolic revolutions uh, against uh, imperialism, what I call universal imperialism. I give you an example of the uh, best example, you know, of, of a symbolic imposition is what I call the imperialism of the universal. You know, you, you say democracy, everybody must be democratic, you know, as here, you know, that is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, that, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's terrible. You, see, you are perfect, you, know. you, you offer the best thing that humanity may offer, but, but you impose it in such a way that the only manner of uh, revolting is to be seen as irrational, uh, anti-democratic, uh, fundamentalist and so on and so on and so on, you know. Uh, so it's very difficult to, to revolt against, uh, and French uh, tradition was a typical uh, imperialism of universal. French Revolution was seen you know, as a model for any kind of revolution. If you haven't a French Revolution, you haven't, uh, you haven't a revolution. So, so uh, uh, yes, you know, uh, uh, Marxists of any country, in Japan, everywhere, they ask, why, why did, uh, did we not have a French Revolution? You know, and that, that, so <laughs> <laughs> that, that it was an historical question. There were piles of books, you know, about that topic, you know. So, and uh, so, uh, and so uh, that's a problem. What, what the rationality is something uh, we accept as universal. And when you say, I colonize you in, in name of, uh, of raison, you know, you are in bad shape, you know, it's difficult. <laughs> so, uh, you are necessarily irrational, uh, you are, you know, uh, nationalistic, you are, you know, terrible, you know, so. And uh, symbolic violence is, some, is important, I think, to understand these kind of things and to understand that people may uh, have very strong revolts and uh, uh, which uh, have to overcome the fact that they, are, that they are seen as absurd, absurd, you know. Why do you do that? Why do you, do you revolt? You have a nice uh, salary, you so on, so on, you have everything, and you want, in addition, to, to be respected. That's too much, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Here. <laughs> I think you sp uh, Professor Bourdieu spoke about the role of the state and how it is involved in the reproduction of uh, the opposition between male and female. And then if you could elaborate on that point. No, uh, that would be a long, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, short, shortly, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know the, 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 the def uh, Weberian definition of state, you know, uh, the monopoly of symbolic, of of violence, you know. So I, I tend to, to say, to understand the, the role of the state, you, you must say, uh, there is a manner of answer your question. Uh, the state has a monopoly of physical violence, you know, and that was, uh, that, that Max Weber had in mind. Uh, uh, monopoly of physical violence, the, the police, army, and so on, so on. And uh, uh, Elias proceeds from Weber. Elias is a development of Weber. Uh, in many respects. You know. uh, uh, 
but uh, I add uh, the monopoly of physical and symbolic violence. You know? And I, I think it's important to, to, to uh, what I have in mind the f is the fact that the, the state uh, uh, has the monopoly of the uh, uh, good vision of the world. You know, he, 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 he has the, the monopoly of the nomos, you know, in, in Greek. I am very postmodern in that sense. I speak Greek too. You know, so uh, nomos is, uh, is, is, is comes from the verb uh, nemo in Greek, and nemo means to partake, to divide, to cut into pieces, and so on, and to distribute. That is very important. To distribute, and to distribute equally. Yes, you know, and uh, at the same, the nomos is translated usually by law, law, uh, and uh, in. Uh, uh, the, the state uh, has the monopoly of the nomos, it has the monopoly of the uh, principle of vision of division, uh, and the uh, monopoly of, of categorization process. You know, it says that the male that the female, which, which is a problem you know, in biological terms as we know now. But, uh, so uh, uh, he says that is a lawyer, that is not. He gives degrees, and degrees say uh, uh, certificate, you know, certificate. Uh, is a, a typical, typically state uh, act, the act of certification. Uh, universities give certification, uh, certificate. Uh, they, they say you are truly what you are. Uh, the, the, the you may claim to be a male, you may claim to be, uh, I don't know, uh, anything. You know. And so the state, uh, in my view, has a monopoly of symbolic violence. Uh, and it's in, my, in my view, it's much more important than the monopoly of physical violence. You know. Uh, in the same logic, because the other one, everybody sees it, you know. Uh, the, 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 the monopoly of symbolic violence is not seen, and in fact, uh, it's, it's uh, much more important. It means that we have the state in mind, you know, we have uh, state categories. And uh, I, I wrote a paper about uh, uh, state in which I quote a uh, very nice diatribe, uh, 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 you know, of, of, of uh, Thomas Bernard, you know. Uh, about uh, about state, he says, you know, we are as children, we we were submitted to the state uh, at school. We were under the state. We have a state in mind, and so on. And so on. He developed that in two pages. It's a wonderful text, you know. and uh, he exaggerates, you know, as a writer. But it's true. You know, he's right. You know, he's, uh, he says. Uh, and uh, so, uh, one of the problems to be a sociologist, you know, is, is to know that we have state minds. You know, we have, and we study state with state minds. So uh, everything uh, seems evident. It's the most important thing, uh, and one of the problems for sociologists is to is to uh, objectify our mind. You know, uh, same I tried to do with uh, our masculine mind. You know, we 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 have state minds, and uh, so uh, so it's, uh, that was my uh, point. Yeah. <laughs> Last one, I no? Yes. You yeah. stop one second. Uh, yeah. Maybe one minute, a yeah. one minute break for the second train leaving the. I have a question here. C'est quoi ça? C'est aussi venu comme ça? C'est quelqu'un qui vous a donné une question? Attendez, mais écoutez, c'est quoi? Je la comprends pas. Euh, euh, comment comment est-ce que vous êtes, comment on peut prendre des positions que, dans lesquelles il n'y a pas de profit Ah oui oui oui. Ah. Les investisseurs lawyers who do work gratuitement. C'est intéressant ça. Peut-être que vous, peut vous voulez prendre, je la lis. C'est très difficile mais je ne sais pas. Bon, je... Oui, oui, oui. Euh, je suis professeur de français au lycée. Non, non, non. Oui, d'accord, d'accord. Deux minutes, deux minutes. Oui. On fait encore une, une ou deux. Hein, une so, ou deux hein? so, uh, we have this one question and then we'll have one more question. Two, this two, two. gentleman over there. Mm-hmm. 
This is a question uh, uh, about the role of psychoanalysis in the Professor Bourdieu's theory of symbolic violence. What does the what role does psychoanalysis play in it? There is a borrowing of terms such as narcissism, sublimate, and so on. There's also explicit analogies made with psychoanalytic processes. And so are these simply borrowings of commonplaces from psychoanalysis, or do these concepts and notions play an analytical role? Uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, I, I try to, to give to these terms and to these models uh, an, analy an anal analytic and control role, but I am afraid that from time to time I, I, I fall down into uh, naive and common uses, you know, because it's, it's very, very, very difficult. And, and uh, so I confess uh, it's not the m uh, most mastered aspect of my work, of my thought, of my what you want. It's, uh, uh, it's something which is uh, uh, very important for me, especially now. You know, I, uh, uh, I had recently a discussion with a, a psychoanalytical sociologist called Jacques Maître. Uh, he's studying, uh, uh, I, I haven't the reference, but uh, uh, you could find uh, uh, the beginning of a systematic elaboration of, of this problem in the a discussion I had uh, with him. Uh, I have the reference, but I could send it to you if you give me your what I, And uh, we had a discussion about uh, uh, he's studying uh, the pro problems which are at the limit uh, of sociology and, and psychoanalysis. He studies the uh, mystical, uh, feminine mystical uh, uh, persons, you know, of 19th century, like Saint Therese de Lisieux or other person l l l less uh, m more, more un unknown unknown you know and uh, uh, the problem is in a case in which uh, uh, the, the the problem of articulating uh, what is usually studied through psychoanalysis and what is ordinarily studied through sociology the problem is uh, uh, immediately present you know and uh, and uh, we, we may discuss it uh, uh, concretely instead of confronting the methods and so on and so on. And uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, one of the contributions, I, 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 uh, one of the results of this discussion was to, to make visible that uh, um, uh, these persons you know, who uh, can be described as having uh, uh, persons, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, who could be uh, analyzed in psychoanalytical terms, uh, these persons are submitted to uh, re so social reworking of their persons, you know, uh, according uh, to the uh, necessities, the constraints of the, uh, what they could call the religious field of the time in which they were. Uh, and I use the same kind of model uh, when I study uh, uh, Heidegger. I have the, my feeling is that, uh, uh, that there are uh, libidinal uh, persons, you know, uh, th that can be studied with the tools of psychoanalysis. You know. uh, if you think of uh, Hedivus complex or uh, anything else. And uh, uh, as sociologists, we may uh, uh, el uh, elaborate uh, an analysis of the re reworking uh, by society, but more specifically by uh, fields, uh, like philosophical field or religious field, and so on, the re-elaboration re of these uh, persons, you know, how they are uh, expressed, uh, how they uh, uh, how they uh, negotiate, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a um, anthropocentric vision, but you know, it's, it's easier to, to express uh, how the person ha have to negotiate their expression, you know. Uh, for example, m many vocational uh, choices, you know, uh, may be described, in my view, as uh, uh, transactions, as negotiation between persons and 
uh, often, you know, the, 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 you know, the uh, uh, field, you know, in a field and the position in a field may be seen as an objective expectation, which uh, gives to somebody the possibility of expressing uh, in socia socially acceptable terms uh, persons which uh, in another field or in another position in, an, uh, in, in the field, in this field, could not be expressed. You know. And uh, uh, I don't know if you understand what I mean. Is that, that is that, uh, you know, and, and so it's very difficult to, in my view, to, to make a, a division between what belongs to psychoanalysis, what belongs to sociology. And so to understand uh, why somebody he has a wonderful case of a pa paranoiac priest, you know, who developed a very quasi-fascist uh, uh, mystique, you know, and this guy could have been uh, a politician, but, uh, but the, the religion, for example, is uh, uh, at a determinate moment, uh, in a determinate religi religious field, with a, with a uh, religious tradition. These people read, you know, they read books, they, they are mystical traditions, they, they have examples and so on. Uh, uh, in a determinate field, uh, uh, p these people may express uh, um, persons uh, which uh, would have uh, uh, put them out o o of the normal uh, life you know, uh, in another time uh, and if they could not resort to uh, the language, the symbolic language uh, of mysticism, for example. You know. So uh, I don't know if I am clear. But, uh, at, uh, 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 you have in, in a, uh, yes, I think the religious field is interesting for, for that reason, because it's, a, to, to be crude, you know, it's a place in which, a thing which could be seen as uh, uh, non-normal, you know, uh, uh, can be expressed in a socia socially acceptable uh, way. And for example, women, uh, you have many, many mystic women, women, you know, and, and uh, um, uh, they, 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 they have to, it's a manner of fighting against priests, you know, against priesthood, which is masculine, you know, and, and so, and, uh, uh, and to express uh, sexual things, evidently sexual things, uh, the symbol of the, of the, of the uh, heart of, of, of Christ, of Christ, and so you have a lot of things which are evidently sexual, you know, and, uh, uh, and so I, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, it's difficult for me to say, uh, to answer the question, what is the relationship between your sociology and psychoanalysis? I think the problem is, in my view, always the same, is to find uh, uh, situations, concrete, concrete uh, uh, scientific problems, you know, uh, uh, in which the problem is, is uh, raised in such a manner that it makes sense to ask the question, uh, what you do as a psychoanalyst, what you do as a sociologist. You know? And uh, as soon as you have this kind of problem, all these vague discussions, you know, of frontiers, of limits, of hierarchy, all disappear, and we work together, you know, and uh, we understand. Uh, so, uh, but uh, to, to say, for, for historical reasons, psychoanalysts are not well prepared to have these discussions with sociologists, because you, you have always a hierarchy of discipline, psychoanalysts being on the side of, of mind, you know, even if it's a, it's a obscure and and uh, disgusting mind in conscious, you know, is, is on the side of soul, you know, and, uh, and uh, sociology is on the side of body, of uh, material things and so on. So you have a hierarchy and, and psychoanalysts are not prepared to discuss uh, in normal terms with, uh, uh, you know, nice sociologists. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one more question over there. government trial. <laughs> <laughs>
the question was about what, what do we do about the coexistence in society of two kinds of categories, abstract categories, universal categories related to commodity forms that tend to annihilate differences, and then concrete categories of the kind that you, that you analyze. How do we make the two cohere together, and how do we provide an analytic framework where we can understand their relation? Difficult for me. I, I, I think uh, one should uh, discuss about precisely, you know, these abstract uh, categories you, you refer to. I, I don't see well, you know, what you have in mind. Is it when, uh, community forms. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not able to answer that seriously. You know, so, uh, I, I think it uh, is a good question, but I, I, I don't dare to, to improvise the uh, answer. No, no, it's just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the differences, perhaps, between a postmodern thinker who always has an answer to every question and a pre-postmodern <laughs> thinker who doesn't always. And, and on this note, I would like to thank and to congratulate Professor Bourdieu for having delivered the first document lecture.